it's Rowan and today I'm going to be talking about something which has really been annoying me. Weak female characters. So I was talking to this guy the other day and I happened to mention in conversation that I like Buffy and he did too. Uh, and then I mentioned that my favourite season was season 5 to which he almost physically recoiled in horror. And I was like I don't really know we can have that much of an aversion to season 5. I mean I thought it had some really good storylines. Uh, probably one of the best episodes The Body, really really like it. And it has the introduction of Dawn Summers, and as it turns out, that was what he disliked about season 5. But Rowan, you enjoy strong female characters so much, I would have thought you'd have hated Dawn Summers, she's so weak. Mmm. So I inquired further, what about Dawn Summers, I asked, do you think is weak? Oh, well, she doesn't really fight, like she can't fight, and she doesn't have magic, and she's just like... Okay, so since the character is an ordinary teenage girl, she is automatically a weak character. Bullshit. The kind of people who think that Dawn Summers is a weak character are also probably the kind of people who think that Sansa Stark is a stupid weak character and that Kaylee Winnet Fry from Firefly's only redeeming feature is that she is a mechanic. No, things that are naturally attributed to women and especially teenage girls do not automatically make a character weak. What makes a character weak is bad writing. Jem in In the Flesh, for example, doesn't become somehow a weak female character because of the things that she goes through in season two with her PTSD. We don't see Jem in the first season as this badass, kick-ass character, and then suddenly the second seasons happen and we look at the realistic aftermath of her going into this kind of war zone when she was so young and think, oh no, now she's a really weak character because she's acting like a teenage girl. No, she's still an interestingly written character. She still has really interesting relationships with Ren um, and with her parents and with the rest of the guys that she was hanging around in this kind of uh, makeshift army. So yes, sometimes when we talk about strong female characters, we are talking about warrior women type characters. We talk about Katniss Everdeen, who is able to shoot arrows at a great distance and is a badass who survived the Hunger Games. Although some critics seem to think that in this latest film, Katniss has somehow become a weak character because she again is suffering from some severe mental trauma from having been in two Hunger Games. That again is absolute rubbish. Female characters that kick ass can be strong female characters, but not all female characters that kick ass are strong characters. If a female character kicks ass, but is badly written, we're looking at a weak female character there. It is not the character themselves, the person who is weak or strong, it is the characterization of that person. It drives me so crazy that there has always been this idea of, um, even in stories which are helmed by female protagonists, in high school drama kind of stuff, in YA fiction, the idea that the main character is somehow the good protagonist character because they are uninterested in the trivial matters that most girls are interested in. It's so stupid that we become obsessed with this idea of tearing down girls who are interested in girly things, like somehow they're the worst thing in the world. Well, I don't care about, you know, makeup and boys and hair like those other girls. Like, I only have like three pairs of shoes. Good for you, it doesn't make you better than that person, it doesn't make you worse than that person, it just makes you different than that person. And guess what? Hashtag feminism, this is all related to the patriarchy and it's related to gender norms and the gender binary. So the idea that everything that is attributed to women is somehow weak and lesser is because everything that's attributed to men is meant to be better and more positive. And so for many people, when they hear about having to make a female character who is more strong, they tend to think about placing attributes of maleness onto that female character. So saying that she's good at fighting or saying that she's very physically strong. In the case of characters like Sansa or um, Dawn, we also have the fact that they are ordinary characters who've been placed in extraordinary circumstances. They are um, in worlds of extremes. So they are in worlds where, well, both of them in fact have a sister who is that stereotypical kick-ass badass character, which seems to be great because they are a total hit because they have this attribute of physical strength and fighting prowess, which is meant to be make them a good character because it's so tied in with maleness and what is seen as uh, the best that anyone in society can uh, go towards. There are people who praise Kaylee from Firefight, for example, um, because they say, oh, isn't it so cool because she's this mechanic character, as if that's what makes her a good character. As if, if she wasn't a mechanic, if she was only the character that was interested in the frilly dresses, somehow that would make her a weaker character. This whole trope idea of the virgin, the mother, the slut, the crone, 
the idea that these female characters are somehow bad, that to just be interested in being a mother is terrible, to be um, a very innocent character who's interested in cute things is somehow terrible, to be a woman who is very sexually assured is somehow terrible in and of themselves is really misplaced. Characters can inhabit an entirely feminine realm. They can have no attributes which link them to the masculine at all. Nothing to do with their appearance, nothing to do with their physical strength, nothing to do with their attitudes towards life. They can be the most girly girls in the entire world and they can still be strong characters because they're going to be written well. So I mean, they're going to have agency or they're going to have interesting things to say, they're going to make interesting decisions, they're going to be at the heart of the action. All of these things are attributes which might make a character well written. And you don't even have to like the character. They can be a complete arsehole and they can still be a strong female character. If you can come back to me and tell me I don't like Sansa Stark and I don't like Dawn Summers because of the way that they're written and give me an idea of what it is about the writing of them that was somehow misplaced in this story in which you enjoy all the rest of the characters, please do. It's fine not to be interested in the characters, not to like the characters, but to call them a weak character just because they have the attributes that women are stereotypically meant to have, um, a fuck you. Knife of Never Letting Go, in which there is a male protagonist, but a lot of the uh, politics and themes of the book revolve around gender and toxic masculinity and how dangerous it is to um, judge boys by the ideas of violent manhood.